Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland, this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes And it's Boxing Day today Boxing Day 2019 or some people say 2019 but I don't I say 2019 and uh, in a week's time I'm going to say 2020 2021 2022 2030 2000 yeah I'm going to continue doing that I'm not really sure why just one of those idiosyncrasies I'm trying to think is it because let's say 19 1984 1999 2000 2001 so no one said 21 they said 2001 2002 2003 2004 2005 2006 everyone said that 2007 2008 2009 no one said 2009 2010 but no people start saying 2010 huh what's that about it's not 20 it's two if you're going to go all the way out 2008 2009 2010 that's just a standard no 2010 2011 2012 especially in this country 2012 because the Olympics 2012 not quite as catchy as 2012 Ooh, I don't think the Olympics would have been successful at all if it had been 2012 Olympics 2012 that's what did it just made it a little bit shorter it's like people are called Steve. They're called Steve, but they people call him Stee. <laughs> it actually takes just as much time to say Stee as it does to say Steve. In fact, depending on how much emphasis you put on the E at the end, it could actually take longer. Let's sort of count it. Steve. Let's say that's four. Stee. It could be five, it could, yes, it could be longer. So it's not actually a shorter version at all. So I'd never call anyone Stee, ever. That's one of my rules. I wouldn't call anyone Jay either. Not if they, well, I would, but I would ne- I've never introduced myself as anything but what my name is. If I meet someone for the first time, I say, my name's Jason. If they want to call me Jay, or Jace or JJ that's what I call myself JJ Juicy JJ if they want to do that that's fine I've got no issues with that I answer to I answer to anything really Mr. Snowman Smelly Tramp I'll I'll, I'll answer to that Crazy Ferret Man I'm, I'm up with that but I don't introduce myself as Jay. I'll only be I'll only be acknowledged. I'll only acknowledge you if I if you say Jay. Nah. Don't do that. Some people do. Some people in fact some people called James or Jamie get called Jay. And I kind of hmm, not sure about that. I think Jay's for Jason. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very particular. J, James, whatever. John, yeah, it's like John, Jack. How do, how do you get up? How do you get Jack out of John? That used to be the old name, isn't it? Like John Kennedy was Jack Kennedy. And my dad is is one. My dad, no, my uncle, was called Edward. 
my granddad was called Edward, okay? Both called Edward. Now, my uncle, everyone calls him Eddie. Never been known as Edward, always known as Eddie. My granddad, always known as Ted. Apart from my nan, she used to call him dad. They had a very unusual relationship. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I think in the old days you used to say dad, didn't you? Because uh, maybe not. No, she used to call him Ted. I used to call him granddad. I didn't I didn't know him as... I didn't... Um, we didn't have that kind of relationship where I could call him by his first name. See, I don't think my dad knows my name because he's been calling me son since I was seven. Since I started living with him. Well, I don't live with them now, obviously, because I'm an adult. Adults don't, adults don't live with their parents, do they? Imagine, imagine a 49-year-old living... Well, actually, there's a lot of 49-year-olds do live with their parents because they're looking after their parents, aren't they? That's kind of where it turns, isn't it? You turn from being looked after to looking after them. Luckily, luckily, my dad married a very young woman lot younger than him about 13 years I think whatever difference so she's got he's got someone to look after him in his you know in his older age when he gets older so just means I won't have to which is good because I didn't didn't well I wasn't going to <laughs> Ooh, I had no intention so so I don't want to be looked after when I get older. I want to. I want to be in care. I just, but a nice. I want to have enough money to pay for decent care, and not be. You know, I mean, it's, I'm sure most care is decent, but I want to ensure it. You know, I want to kind of make sure financially that everything's taken care of in my old age. So. I want to make sure I don't want any family changing me or barfing me. I, I like them as friends. I don't don't like them in that way. Ed, oh, a squeaky chair. In some ways, it might sound a bit weird, but um, a lot of people don't like the loss of independence. Uh, like my nan didn't she didn't she really didn't like it having people come round her house or around her because she went into she she basically she she broke her hip in 2001 and she still managed to hobble along afterwards and you know she had it fixed and everything and then she broke her hip a second time and she had to basically move out of the house because she could hardly get around anymore. She's very, uh, the stairs, it was just a matter of time before uh, something bad happened, so, or more bad stuff. So yeah, she moved into sheltered accommodation. Lovely little place it was, and she didn't, <laughs> she didn't like it. So it's okay for me to say lovely little place, but I didn't live there. She was used to her independence and wanted to... She lived in a house. The same house she'd lived in since 19... About 1980. So what's that? 1980, 90... 2000... 80? 90, 2000... So 20... 20... She's probably there for about 26 years, 27 years. I don't know exactly what year she moved into the place, the sheltered accommodation. Don't remember exactly. Uh, probably because she left, she left the planet in 2015, 2014 rather. In this week actually 
and she not this week not now but 29th of December and she'd been in there for about six years I think I think I think I'm not 100% sure but I was living in a little room <laughs> as I had been for most of my adult life different little rooms and she she lived for me that was like a kingdom it was like a palace to me the um because she had a bedroom she had a living room it was lovely it was had a kitchen bathroom but she didn't have the garden she didn't have the the stuff that she wanted she didn't have the memories connected to the building you know connected to her home I mean, she had lots of photographs and stuff like that and she uh, she was funny because she's really friendly but she used to moan about people just coming in <laughs> like neighbours like, I'd be around there and neighbours like hello Eileen and she'd like they come in like yeah hello yeah are we going to the main hall are you going to come along she said yeah I'll be there in a minute and they'd uh she'd see them out and she'd lock the door <laughs> it's like, uh, looked at me as if to say you know you forgot to lock it Jason <laughs> remember I don't want them people coming in so I think I'm a little bit like her I'm a bit um, I can be really friendly but at the same time I like my space I don't want someone just walking into my home and I don't think it would have bothered her so much, you know, if she'd have been in the house. Because she loved that house. And that's where her and my granddad lived for a long time. From 1980 to 1991. When he left. Uh, to go to heaven. And she she had two bedrooms. Because like, it's a house I used to live in when I was a kid for about a year and so there was two bedrooms pretty much the same size uh, big double bedrooms one at the front of the house one at the back of the house next to each other but one like a window at the back that looked at the motorway but the motorway was far enough away for it not to really he didn't notice it, it, was, it was, I don't know how to explain it but it was it was more like background sound, very like zoom, uh, 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 like that, rather than anything else. The front of the house, that room, was the that's my nan and granddad's room. And when I lived there, that was my parents' room. And then there's a little room, which, not a box room, it was big enough to be a bedroom because when my nan lived there there was a single bed plus there was plenty of room for other stuff she had an airing cupboard in there and and what I would do is I would stay when I used to stay with her because I spent most of my 20 well all of my 20s in fact living in um, London so from 19 what was it January 91 to September 2001 I think it is I was living in London so I used to come down and I'd stay with her sometimes and uh, or if I was just coming down for the day I'd just come and stay you know but I'd sort of stay at Christmas sometimes and stuff like that and I almost age regressed being there just you know it's really weird it's just like sleeping in that little single bed there was the smell of the house that I think everybody has don't they everyone's there's a I don't know I think every so I don't think there's a smell in this house but it's probably like a real smell of Andre and that apparently um but I 
there was this familiar smell with my nan's house, same as with my dad's house as well. Didn't notice it with my, when I lived. I've never noticed it wherever I've lived, but when I've visited, there's that kind of familiar smell that's different for every place. And there was that, you know, that was the, the familiar, it basically it was a Newland, new land household for a long time, from 19, no, it wasn't 1980, it was 1978 or 79 she moved in, because I was eight years old, not 10, yeah, eight, something like that anyway, and I moved in there, maybe it was eight, 1979, I moved out, so my little brother was born, in August 1978 when I was eight he was born the day before me or the day before, well, my little brother was born the day before me he was that he was born the day before my eighth birthday um, I I actually inst I instigated the um, not instigate I don't know if that's the right word but started off the the pregnancy uh, that was going to sound wrong I had nothing to do with the pregnancy I'm sitting my head I with the actual water breaking and stuff I I I instigated that um by tripping them up so that that got that started and no, I didn't I, I actually fell over I fell over and was crying like a I see like a, a seven year old that was just falling over and hurt himself. That's kinda of standard I think. I gotta just let it go, man. I gotta let it go. Stop judging myself. I was seven. You're allowed to cry when you fell off. you're allowed to cry when you fall over at any age. Yes, it's okay to cry, man. It's alright. And she picked me up. And even I was little I was a tiny little thing. Um, even a little seven year old boy is still going to weigh quite a lot when you're pregnant well just anyway but when you're pregnant and I don't think I had butter in the stomach but um, no, no, purposely but there was a strain or something and it caused a water to break and uh, honestly I was I was like oh fuck First of all, I, now I've fallen over the first of all, now it's raining. <laughs> it's like brilliant. It's like, but no, it's, uh, it wasn't. And uh, I thought she was trying to drown me. And uh, it was it was okay. She she went and had baby and um, my nanny and granddad came down and looked after us. And it was my birthday, so I had my eighth birthday with my nan. My dad was... I don't know what he was doing probably back and forth to the hospital and stuff um, and I even remember what I got that year because some would say well you can remember that birthday because your little brother was born I'm going to remember that birthday because I got a golf set a proper steel golf set and I hit my brother over the head with it not my little brother that was just born that would have been I had to wait at least six months before I started beating him but <laughs> and I'm joking I I did I hit my little brother my, my older brother around the head but it was an accident it was um, but I just remember and I always just got told off for arguing and then told us all off because we were being naughty and my nan didn't tell us off very often but then she wasn't really in charge of us very often you know she she I think her role really was to be nanny nanny Newland and would go and visit and but so we always was pretty much on our best behaviour but because she came to our house oh no such luck we was naughty naughty I was I was never naughty I was 
I would say I was the perfect child. I think if you're ever going to give birth to a child, um, I'd probably be the perfect one. I, I was, yeah, never naughty. Got done for stealing a couple of times, but actually, I did get stunned for. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I got done at school, right? See, I'd. I was born, I, I grew up rough. Rough. I grew up rough. I was. The mother left at uh, six months old. So then I was in foster care for about a year and a half, maybe two years, I don't know, something like that. And then, well, about two, yeah, so about two years old, my mum came back and took us, and we lived in Newcastle, and I lived in a council estate in Newcastle and it was a rough place to live not not because it was Newcastle it's just that just happened to be quite a rough I just remember it being pretty rough that's all and not at the age of two but as I kind of got older and then at the age of about five I went into lived in a couple of children's homes to the age of seven so I was a bit rough, you know. I wasn't um I wasn't the finished article, you may say. So I had a little bit of uh I had life experiences that a lot of kids wouldn't have had. Um quite a few different like having moved around, lived in different environments, um lived in you know, lived with Catholic nuns in a children's home I mean that's that's an experience I know pretty f hundreds of thousands of people have lived that lifestyle but it's you know if you put it all together it's quite a unusual kind of mix I think Cause I remember when I was a counsellor and the one of the counsellors said to me because we were dealing with children with like young people counselling and she said to me, um, I was told about people that had been adopted. And she said, yeah, it's a very, very serious thing. And uh, you have to be qualified, you have to have special training to deal with people that have been qualified, uh, that have been um, uh, adopted. I said, why? So I really generally didn't know. I didn't really kind of see it as a, and that was my blind spot in a sense because I'd I'd been adopted, so I'd gone through fostering. They wanted to adopt me, and then my mum didn't want that. Took us away. Had foster had different parents and stuff. Whatever, childhood, child homes, and and then my dad's new wife adopted us when I was seven. So, to me, adoption wasn't really, it was the least of my interest, you know, it wasn't, it was, didn't really affect me, but then thinking about it, if someone had been adopted and didn't, didn't know it, and they spent their whole life thinking that person was their parent, I could see how it would be a, not a specialist thing, but a, an issue for some people or for a lot of people I guess because I didn't have mine wasn't like that yeah but anyway I was at school when I was about eight or seven I just moved I went to three junior schools just in the first uh within two years the first year or something of moving or through two years and so the first one I went to it was just up the road from where I lived when I f we first moved there and we were living in this white house not the white house a white house and it was lots of ants there I remember that 
and it wasn't big enough for all of us. It wasn't. It was basically my dad's new wife's mother, so her house, and we all lived there for. It wasn't a huge amount of time really, because uh, we then got the council house, which was ended up being my nan and granddad's as well. So we moved there, and that wasn't. It was big enough until my little brother came along, and then we had to move again. Uh, but that house was just not too far away from the school. Well, you know, I got in with the wrong crowd <laughs> at seven. I was in with the wrong crowd, and uh, it was basically. I feel, I've always liked girls, like even from an early age, and it's it's something probably that happened when I was in the. I just, I just just always really, I was uh, aware, but not not physically aware, perhaps you know, but I'm most I'm mentally aware of my attraction for for women. For you know, when I was seventeen. I would have, you know, I really, really liked teenage girls, like girls that were like 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, if that's what I would have gone for, even at seven. I just, it was just the way I was. And, but there was this girl at school that I really fancied, and she was the same age as me. And she, we showed each other that we liked each other by, you know, punching each other and running away, that kind of stuff and pulling each other's hair, you know, that stuff. And one day she came up to me and she says, uh, Oi, Jason, get here. So I did, because I was scared of her. I was scared of most people, most women that I've ever met. <laughs> oh. And I um, said to her, yeah, what do you want? She said, look at this. She said, um, she showed me a key What's that? She has the key to the tuck shop. Uh huh. It's a key to the tuck shop. Because basically, uh, I'm, I might have to explain what a tuck shop is. Um, it's basically it was it was a room with a cubby hole where you could buy stuff: sweets, chocolate bars. I don't know about cans of coke or stuff like that. I really am not sure. But this was the seventies, so probably anything kind of went, I guess. You know, a line of coke. I, I really, honestly, don't know anything you wanted. Really, it was there wasn't quite as much um, uh, care. <laughs> there wasn't quite as much health and safety and caring in the seventies as there is these days. It was really a case of just let the kids get on with it to a degree of course um, anyway but it's mainly crisps really and um, chocolate bars stuff like that well what we did is we hid after school because we knew that there was when everyone left the only people left in the school would be the janitor and as long as he didn't get hold of us we were fine and so we hid so we all kind of had our own little way of hiding it was so much fun there was actually three of us me her and I think she got someone else involved as well which was annoying because I thought she liked me and uh, so we started just staying behind, sneaking in, and helping ourselves to crisps and pop. <laughs> it was brilliant. Now, I didn't class it as stealing. I just classed it as free food. Because had it been in a supermarket or in a shop, then I would have classed that as stealing. I also did that as well, but 
only, I think I stole by accident once, twice, twice, three times, four times. Actually, yeah, that's not, it's an accident, is it? You do it more than, f more than five times. If it's under five times, it can still be an accident. And I remember the times, I'm, there's one I'm not going to tell you about, and there's two I'm not going to tell you about, because... Yeah, it's, a, it's embarrassing. One, I've got no idea why I did it. And the other one is... Um, yeah, I just... Uh, it was very silly. I'm probably still on the video camera in that shop. I've probably still got the CCTV footage of that. And I'm surprised it's never been shown on telly if it was recorded. Because <laughs> it was... It was a long time ago, you know. Like 20... 25 years ago or something but um, yeah anyway it wasn't anything bad Just it was just ridiculously silly and uh, anyway I um, there was this one time I was in the co-op which is a it's kind of it's a it's a shop it's like a little supermarket, they're not very big. Well, so there's some co-ops are big, but a lot of them are quite more local. And there's there's maybe one, two, three, four aisles, you know. And you'd they're, they're nice little things, you, you know. You, it's like a basically a, a a convenience store, but run by a big company, and you get more choice in there than you would probably with a. Um, like a happy shopper or some, uh, I always kind of classed happy shoppers as dodgy. I don't know why. Just I suppose living in London, everything seems. I lived in East London, everything seemed a bit dodgy. It just I don't know. There was, nothing seemed to be legit. Even the jobs didn't seem to be legit. I get the Evening Standard and look for a job, and it just it was almost like I was being sold to by a second hand car salesman you know with the description of the job right is this an actual proper job that's probably why I never really had a proper job the whole time I was in London because I didn't see apart from one when I was in a bakery that was the only proper job I had and that was the best paid job I've ever had as well and that was in 1991 I was working I could have worked all the shifts I wanted I could have ended up being a supervisor and a manager because uh, the manager people in charge of it absolutely loved me for some reason I don't know why but they did they really really got on well with me and spent a lot of time coming and chatting to me so I could have been a manager I could have earned a lot of money got a house which would now you know be worth a lot of money as well sort of in that part of the country but unfortunately I got into a relationship <laughs> and uh, that's kind of ended the job it's quite weird though because this this relationship thing I kind of went off the rails a little bit for about 10 days and I didn't, I didn't go I just didn't turn up for work so I was sacked you know, no, no manager likes you enough to let you just go off for 10 days so I, you know I was I was sacked so that was it so I turned up to collect my last paycheck which was quite a big bunch of cash for the previous month or the previous week or whatever it was plus holiday pay that I was owed and the sister of the manager so I didn't only get on with the managers uh, the person in charge of the whole factory whole bakery and then the one who was second in charge was his brother I even remember their names and and then everyone else was underneath him and his sister, their sister, also worked there. 
and I got on really well with his sister. Um, he used to spend quite a few lunches and stuff, eating lunch with her and chatting to her and everything. Without anything happening, because I was in a relationship and I didn't think of anything of it, and I saw her on the way to me going to get my last paycheck, and she was on the road coming the other way. She was just walking the other way, and she stopped and uh, she said to me that she really liked me, but she was also in a relationship. And if she wasn't, she'd definitely, I think her tone was jump my bones, <laughs> I think. Yeah, so that was, that was a little lift on a day which was fairly difficult. Because all I wanted was my job back, really. I said to her, well, can you not speak to your brothers? And she said, no, nah, they don't want, they don't like you anymore. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, fair enough. But I do. Anyway, there was one time in the co-op and I I was basically waiting in a queue to pay for a Mars bar. But I was hungry. And by the time I got I was still like three people away from the till. I realised I'd eaten the Mars bar. So I just walked off and nothing. You know, I thought, oh. But what it didn't, it didn't make me think, oh, I'm going to start stealing because I don't have, I know I just said I've like stolen loads of times, but I haven't really thought, oh. Mm. Space it out over 49 years, it's not that often. And that's the sub logic to that, but I'm not. I'm not into stealing. I'm not a thief, uh, and it's hard to be a thief when you've spent a couple of years, or three years, or two or three years living with uh, Catholic nuns. It's you. You get that. There's that guilt that kind of is there. You know, it's very difficult to. Well, for me, I found it very difficult to go against those um, rules of not stealing although I managed it a little bit anyway we got caught we got caught when we was in the um, school in the tuck shop The I think the janitor caught us or either that or it was the headmistress and I I can't remember how I felt. I suppose I was scared I'd get in trouble or something like that. I don't know. And they didn't tell our parents. Or at least if they didn't, did. Nothing, I wasn't told nothing. I thought I got away with it. I thought, oh, this is cool. And this was on a, I think it was Friday night, maybe a Thursday evening. And still nothing the fri no Friday evening probably anyway. Coming on a Monday. Who walks in? A policeman. <laughs> a policeman walks into the front of the class and gives us all a lecture about not stealing. And who had to stand up in front of the whole class? me and then the other two kids the girl and the other boy that was it wasn't my finest moment it wasn't it wasn't my worst moment either but it wasn't the finest part of my life it was like okay I'm, also, I'm almost glad that I managed to leave the school and go to a different school after that because that stuff can stick around with you, can't it? It's like being in class and you think it's just a fart and it isn't. And, you you know, that just carries around with you all the way through school, that um, 
incredibly embarrassing moment but luckily I moved to a different school so it was alright and I don't think I did much stealing in that school uh, that's when I used to start um, that's when I started uh, lending money I was a shown lark a shown lark a loan shark a shown lark yeah, so that was good. Uh, I did use to lend money when I was in high school. And it's not an easy job, actually. Because I was always working, so I, I had more money when I was at school than I have now. More spare money to spend. Because I was working from the age of 12. I worked part-time. At one point, I had an early morning paper round... Uh, Monday to Saturday evening paper round Monday to Saturday a weekly paper round which was a um, like leaflets like a weekly you know those weekly magazines you get um, I don't know if you get them where you live but we get them here they're well, we don't anymore, but we used to. But you can buy them in the shops. And it'd be just like a paper with news in, but also it's basically a bunch of adverts and stuff. And then I'd have a monthly paper round, which was leaflets, giving leaflets, and I'd have like 10,000 leaflets to deliver like all around the place. It'd be loads. And that'd take up it probably take about a weekend to do that or maybe yeah probably about a weekend so I don't know how many I'd, I'd spend all weekend doing it maybe a few days yeah maybe two weekends I'm not sure but usually so I had four four incomes coming in so I had money to you know I didn't have to pay rent or anything because I was a child living at home and so I used to buy books and never once thought about buying clothes and if I had I might have been popular at school because those that were fashionable were popular and I, I never really knew how to be fashionable if that makes sense I still don't really and it's a bit late now because I don't have the my body's not the right it's well my body's it's kind of different shape to how it used to be because I used to be really slim really 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 skinny like as skinny as you can get you know you see my ribs showing there'd be you know there was no I had muscle but I was still skinny ultimately and I didn't like it. I didn't like being that skinny, but I couldn't change it. I used to eat and eat. I went on a bodybuilding diet where I was eating every every couple of hours, going to the gym, and I just couldn't put weight on. Literally, it wasn't till 2005 when I went on antidepressants that I first put weight on. Isn't that weird? So all those years skinny absolutely skinny I mean not an inch of fat on me my BMI or whatever it is BMX um, level would have been properly low uh, now it's it's kind of topsy-turvy now very top heavy I've got um always like top heavy women now I'm a top heavy man isn't it weird I've got um, my legs are still pretty skinny not skinny but slim compared to mind you everything's slim compared to my belly I do sometimes I'm walking down the street at, at Christmas I have to be careful because I, I knock over children with my belly I don't mean to I'm just walking down the street and I knock people over it's like it's just 
It's not fair. I'd like to be, here's what I'd like to be. I'd like to be the same weight as I am now, but with the same body and shape as I had before. Because I would be, I'd really look good. If it was muscle, obviously, if it was no fat, I mean, get rid of all the fat, no fat, but it's just the same shape. So I just, you know, I'd look really, I suppose I'd probably look like a bodybuilder, I guess, if I was that kind of, because I had pretty, what, 20, I used to have a 26 or 27 inch waist. And now um um at least 36 inch now I'd say possibly possibly 34 it was 34 it was 32 at one point and then it went to 36 I personally think that I've lost weight off my belly a little bit because um, I like saying it so yeah that's the only reason I say it because it sounds nice um, but I do if I went back mind you if I went back I don't think I'd be thinking about what trousers to buy because if I went back I'd just be in the same position as I was then because I always would choose pretty much to buy books over anything else because I loved reading and to the point actually that and I've, I've, I've lost that love a little bit because I haven't given myself the opportunity for quite a while to get so engrossed in books reading was my favourite thing and pretty much my favourite thing to do when I was a kid I used to love watching telly as well but when I was at school I went through periods because I think I've always had this I don't think, I know I've always had the um, a <laughs> few issues and I know sometimes when I'd be full of energy and want to go out and fight and play and just be just you know, at school, you know, during break time and just get involved with everything and get in trouble or watch other people get in trouble, you know, that kind of stuff. And then other times I'd just hide away, find somewhere where there's no one around and I'd just sit there and read a book and that had nothing to do with anybody for weeks sometimes. So, it's, you know, it's, the books kept me comfort. I mean, there was one time, all right, so I used to watch Star Trek on telly, you know, the original TV show. And part of the reason why I didn't want to watch the new one, well, it's not new now, but the um, next generation that started in the 90s was because I was such a big fan of the original series. I also read loads of the books so I had a quite a deep connection with the original show because not only had I watched them loads and loads I'd read the books as well so when the new show came along I didn't want anything to do with it however it turned out that it was brilliant and I absolutely loved it so it's uh, I never read those books one of my favourite books ever and I still got it I haven't still got it but I re-bought it and it's Sapphire and Steel one of my f f top favourite TV shows ever it's had um, David McCullum and what's her name um, David McCullum and 
Patsy from Adfab. Adfa uh, absolutely fabulous. Um, I can't forget what's her name. But she's. They. Sapphire and Steel was. And still is probably my favourite TV programme of my childhood. So I bought the book, and the book was the pretty much even better than the TV show. It was almost trance-like. Um, and what's ironic, don't you think, is I... The actual book was written by the same person that wrote some fix some of the Doctor Who shows. So he's very I think I might I might be wrong. I'm pretty sure. But he would have written the Doctor Who shows like later on, you know, maybe twenty years later. No, that doesn't make sense, does it? Well, it might do, because he might have only been in his 20s when he wrote Sapphire and Steel, and he was in his 40s when he wrote Doctor Who. I mean, everybody, you know, everybody something. That's what I always say, everybody something. Kind of sums it up. So I was standing there in front of the uh, class with the policeman and it was embarrassing, it was. That's all, that's all I've got to say for that one. What other time? Oh, there was a time, right, when I was at college when I was 16. I went to catering college as part of my... It was one day a week. I was working in a chip shop. I was on a YTS and part of the scheme I was getting paid £27.30 a week or something like that and part of the scheme was I had to go to college on a I think it was a Wednesday so that's what I did and we I remember the people the people on their course we went to have some lunch we went to this Big, it's a big old place it was and I remember where it was but I can't remember where it was I kind of vaguely remember sort of the area because it wasn't far from the college and so we went in there and we all sort of, I don't know how many of us there was, probably about six maybe really busy in there, really busy we got our food, had it and we were waiting to pay and we had to be back at college and they weren't great on uh, lateness they weren't a big fan of that and because we were 16 they were still treating us like kids um, unlike adults that go to college like uh, when you're older you get the teachers can't get away with treating kids Can't treat you can't treat a 30 year old like a kid but when you're 16, you've spent your last 12 years at school, or whatever it is, you don't know any different because you're so used to being treated like a little child by teachers and being talked down to, you almost just accept it because it's just standard. Anyway, we were standing there, or sitting there rather, having had a dinner. It was all right. I don't remember the particular tastes involved because it was 33 years ago. But we were waiting to pay, honestly, waiting to pay. But kept saying, put our hand up. Because, well, you know, you're at school, you put your hand up. That's what you've got to do, isn't it? What's Andre doing? He's moved his bag. He's moved his bag around the wrong way. Ah, oh, who knows what's going on with him. 
pissed. Uh, anyway, so we just walked out. And no one followed us. And it wasn't so much stealing. It was just we were trying to pay and they were rude to us. So, uh, so we said, okay. And we just walked. And that's the only time that's ever happened. Apart from... When I first started working at Churchill in 2001, we had our training for two weeks, you know, training, insurance, all that stuff. Now this story has got nothing to do with Churchill, I just put that, I don't want to get sued by Churchill, but this is the people that were working with me at the time, they're probably none of them working there now, but the team, the trainer took us to like we all went out for the evening uh, at the end of the training to celebrate there was probably about 12 of us I suppose so we went to the pub or whatever and had that then we ended up going to an Indian restaurant and they had a lovely meal it was really good the whole thing was really nice and then they were all whispering. And someone shouted out, run for it. And they just, everyone, except me and one other person, ran out of the restaurant and ran away. The only two people left was me and another Londoner. I say another Londoner, but I was, I'd lived, I was born in London, but I lived in London for many years. And... I wouldn't even think about doing something like that in London, and it's because I'd expect someone to be coming out of a machete, you're chasing me, you know. So I wouldn't, wouldn't do that. But they just took off, and sure enough, the staff came out and surrounded us, me and him. And I, I didn't realise there was that many staff there, and I said, well. <laughs> I said, you got to pay, you got to pay. I said, no, nah, i pay for mine. That's all I'm paying. Like my fr the other bloke, he paid for the rest of the people there on his credit card. And he made sure he got the money back. But I was, I want to pay for my food. Call the police, I don't care. <laughs> I'll pay for what I've eaten. I'm not going to pay for other people's food because they've decided to run off. I don't play those games. I learn at school not to steal that's why I really do it so yeah I've got I'm a very moral person I'm almost, almost like a saint it's pretty good what other times have I stolen um, I used to <laughs> This is tough. I used to work in a, I used to have a cleaning job. Again, this is a long, long time ago. I was a teenager still, okay? So I'm not, you know, this isn't something that I would ever do. But um, I was cleaning this supermarket and I did help myself to sweets. Because there was these pick and mix things and every day I went in there I just, just help myself to have a sweet and stuff. Now, technically, that's stealing, isn't it? I mean, don't even need the word technically. That is stealing. Taking something that doesn't belong to you is stealing. But um, I saw it more as a perk. What other things have I... I suppose paper or I've used I've used photocopies sort of so I've used like company paper and photocopiers and stuff to do stuff to make leaflets for my free service and so I guess I mean I suppose that's stealing isn't it but it's helping other people Um. Right then, I, f I forgot, yeah, I robbed the jewellery. 
there was that so that was a Mac the Hatton Hatton Gardens um, <laughs> got away with 60 million I forgot about that I completely forgot isn't it weird I remember the Mars bar but no I've not done anything like that really I did when I was again oh, this, this is terrible and I don't know why I did it again it's probably um part of the personality disorder kind of um, taking chances it's not it's, it's, a, it's a word for it was it um, I was diagnosed as there's a bipolar but then there's the um, uh, what was it called emotionally unstable personality disorder with uh, <laughs> with um, what's that word you know when you do something it's the opposite to being lazy uh, I might do something just out of out of the blue without like thinking about it and there's a word for it I can't think what it's called but yeah that's kind of what I was diagnosed with as well as well as the bipolar and and there has been times when I have done that it's kind of where you put yourself into situations that perhaps you shouldn't and um, do stuff off the cuff without planning and take chances and you know that kind of stuff which I don't really do anymore because well not much not much because it's not really not really my thing but I used to a bit I used to a bit yeah I'm still trying to think of the word yeah so uh, I went to a supermarket I went not to I went to a news agents when I was I gotta be careful. I'll get end up. Imagine the police. Yes, we gotta to come to arrest you for stealing a Mars bar in nineteen seventy nine. But yeah, I, I did some weird stuff. Anyway, I won't go into. But um, what is it? What's that word? It's getting. I can't think what the word is. It's definitely a word. A word of some kind. Yeah. So I'm I'm doing this early in the day. Normally I do it in the morning, you know, sort of early hours. I'm doing this in the afternoon. It's one forty eight in the afternoon and it looks like it's six o'clock in the evening. It's you know, it's it's starting to get dark already. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I've got the light on inside. It's, it's, I shouldn't. I've been up. I don't know why, but for some reason, I seem to have. My sleeping has changed a bit. And. I woke up about 10. Half 10. I needed the light on even then. It's just a. Uh, it's the weird time of the year, isn't it? It's only a few weeks left and then it start getting brighter. You know, before we know it, it'll be summer. Because in the summer, when it's like nice, you know, when it's sort of warm and bright and everything, I think to myself sometimes, oh, how do I get through the winter? How do, I get, how, how do we get through it with all that like grim weather and that but then this is almost my favourite time especially the beginning of the year January the 1st so I have twice a year I have like a well actually it's not true but I, I was going to say twice a year I evaluate my life I evaluate my life nearly every day to be fair I'm always evaluating 
sort of what am I doing, where have I been, where am I going, why am I doing this, what should I do next? I'm constantly evaluating that, but uh, have like a a bit more of a, a bit more time doing that when it's my birthday and then when it's New Year's Day or yeah, New Year's Eve sort of so I'm going to plan for this year coming up 2020 or do we say 2020 2020 that's eyesight isn't it 2020 you got 2020 eyesight I don't I have like 114 or something I don't know my my eyesight is not it's alright with my glasses on never really wanted to wear glasses I'll be honest if you'd have asked me when I was you know when I turned 8 if you just said to me on my birthday Jason because no one else ever called me anything but Jason back then someone said Jay I wouldn't have even turned around wouldn't know what what Jay Bird the Jay Birds from what was it Saturday Night Fever <laughs> and they'd have said oh Jason I'm making this last longer because I've forgotten what I was talking about so what would you what do you want to be when you get older and I'd have said policeman and they said why I said because I'm very law abiding <laughs> I actually thought I was there was a time seriously when I was about yeah about 8 9 I used to tell people off for swearing I'd actually I'd, I would instigate punishment to people that swore it's ridiculous it's like I was this little um nightmare at times like why who was I to tell other people how, what they should and shouldn't say don't swear Urgh. I think it was the I think it's the nuns the nuns did it they put that in my head shouldn't swear <laughs> there's a joke coming but I won't say it but it's okay <laughs> let me fill in the gap oh I'm watching something on telly. Wow. Ding, bing, da bing, ying, bong. Papa dum, papa dum, papa dum, dum, bum. Right, so that's the end of this highly um, not inclusive, that's not the right word. Envious, no. I'm sure those birds are in the loft are going to end up coming through that wall. I hear them, like tweeting, tweet, 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 like scratching all hours of the day. And I've seen them from outside flying in. I mean, I've been in the garden and I saw them flying. Not inventive, intensive, inquisitive, repetitive, yeah, I don't know. So yeah, oh, I'm so glad I could share everything that I share with you. It's ever so wonderful, ever so glorious. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is.
Is 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 is. Also, welcome, or well, well done to Natalie for winning the Echo Dot, the Amazon Echo Dot, in yesterday's competition final winner. And those that are still awake, there is a new competition where if you share, every time you share a post that I make, I should have mentioned this at the beginning. Every time you share a post that I post to Facebook, you share it onto your own page or onto a a group that you're on or whatever, you'll be entered into the competition where you can win a disk drive with all of my Let Me Bore You to Sleep recordings on. So I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Ning. Take care and remember to be kind to yourself. Lots of love. Bye.